Hello. Um, hello, I'm Arsalan Ghani. Uh, I am from IMT. And uh, today we are having Shivani, uh, Shivani Kao. Shivani is, uh, uh, she is the president of uh, DA, DSA WHU. And she's also a political activist. Uh, she's representing Angandwani workers uh, movement in India. And we are very fortunate to have her here on the eve of May Day. And hello, Shivani. Hello. Thank you, comrade. Thank you for inviting me. And it's a pleasure to speak to you and all other comrades everywhere in the world. Thank you. Thank you, Shivani. Shivani, uh, first of all, tell us about yourself and the organization which you are representing uh, in India. Uh, I'm a political activist. I'm actually a part of a workers group called Bigul Mazdoor Dasta, but I'm also president of Delhi State Anganwadi Workers and Helpers Union, uh, which is an independent uh, trade union of Anganwadi uh, women workers and helpers in uh, Delhi. And this union was constituted in 2015. And since 2015, we've led three major strikes uh, in Delhi in 2015 itself, then in 2017, and uh, uh, in 2022, uh, mm -hmm. this year. And uh, I've been associated uh, with the union since 2015. Yes. Okay, thank you. So uh, can you tell me about Anganwani workers? So wh what kind of uh, work they are doing, what kind of trade they are involved in, and uh, how they are organizing across whole country? Okay, so Anganwadi uh, women workers are basically uh, caregiving workers in India. So in 1975, the government of India, the central government, it had launched this flagship scheme called Integrated Child Development Scheme under which these Anganwadi centers, Anganwadi is basically, you know, uh, like a small courtyard where uh, kids, from three to six years of age were supposed to come for their uh, pre-school uh, non-formal education as well as uh, they were supposed to receive uh, supplementary nutrition through these uh, centers. Now government uh, employ two kinds of workers in Anganwadis. Uh, these, the, there are broadly speaking two categories called workers and helpers. Mm -hmm. And uh, funnily enough, uh, these are not state employees. So they are not regular employees of the state, the karamcharis, and they are not even recognized as workers, not even mazdoors. Uh, they are called voluntary workers. And uh, there are like different nomenclature government uses for them, sometimes social workers, sometimes voluntary workers, and they do not receive any salary or wages, they get honorarium, uh, which in Hindi roughly translates to mande. So they get honorarium and they are not regular employees and government and the state, uh, the capitalist state has actually come up with this very, you know, shrewd and clever idea of uh, engaging these women workers from the very vulnerable sections of the society, from working class itself and engage them in the very central task of reproduction of the labor power. So what they are actually doing, they're actually uh, in the process of uh, building new generations of the working class. So the children they are catering to, the needs of the children or the lactating or nursing mothers they're catering to, they are precisely the working class children and working class women. And these women themselves are from uh, working class. And now government, uh, has actually taken away this onus from the capitalist class, from the bourgeoisie. And how state is subsidizing this entire work by not recognizing their work as regular work, by not engaging regular employees in this very central and crucial task. But, uh, you know, actually uh, given, giving them some meager honorarium and uh, asking them to do all kinds of work. So the scheme started with catering to the needs of non-formal education as well as supplementary nutrition. But now it entails all kinds of uh, roles. For example, these Anganwadi women workers, uh, during the time of elections, they are engaged as booth level officers. So they do all kinds of 
other works during the electoral period. They're also uh, employed in uh, carrying out census, carrying out the survey of stray animals, uh, registering of deaths and births. So they do all kinds of work and this does not count in their uh, given responsibility or the responsibility that is stipulated in the policy. And, uh, you know, sadly enough, they are not recognized as uh, yeah. voluntary so, workers. So it seems that they are like highly casualized force of workers who are uh, used by the government um, yes. in, in a lot of uh, work and they are yet not recognized properly as a worker as per the law. And uh, so can you tell a bit about what are the key challenges and problems which are being faced by these workers at the moment? So, uh, you know, uh, for example, as far as uh, our union, Delhi State Anganwadi Workers and Helpers Union is concerned, since 2015, we've been engaged in organizing these women workers uh, for the crucial demand of recognition of their work. Mm -hmm. They should be recognized as uh, government employees. They should be given all the benefits that are, uh, you know, uh, 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 given by government, by the state to all the government employees, because the kind of work they do, it should be classified as uh, government work and as like regular work. So one of the challenges that we face is that state is not you know, uh, recognizing mm -hmm. this uh, task. And uh, our struggle since 2015, one of the crucial demands that we've been raising is, first of all, regularization of their work and recognition of these Anganwadi women workers and helpers as regular employees. Secondly, uh, as a short-term goal, we are also asking for increase in their honorarium. So, for example, in 2015 in Delhi, a worker used to receive 5,000 rupees and helper 2,500. And now imagine in a city like Delhi, which is one of the costliest cities across the world, uh, a wor worker or a helper uh, making ends meet in uh, this meager amount of 5,000 or 2,500. Then after that struggle, their honorarium was doubled. And in this, in the current struggle in 2022 also, the immediate demand was that their honorarium should be increased to 25,000 and 20,000 respectively for workers and helpers. Uh, the government did increase, but it was a very uh, like nominal increment this time. But yeah, uh, immediately speaking, the short term demand is that they should at least get the living wages. Uh, and this, the entire notion of minimum wage is also very problematic because it's like keeping the working class at the uh, you know bare minimum level of survival. So what we were asking for living wages for all workers and especially for Anganwadi women workers. So mm -hmm. apart from that, uh, you know, uh, uh, benefits like ESI, Provident Fund, um, uh, summer vacations, winter breaks whatever a government employee gets, they should also uh, be given. So these are basically the key demands that we've been raising and uh, uh, the government, be it central government or state government, uh, have not recognized these demands so far. So the struggle continues and uh, I think this is one of the uh, main challenges that organizing these women workers uh, yeah, can you can you, you know, bit, uh, tell about the the struggle that how how the struggle is going and when it started and uh, what are the challenges you faced uh, throughout the whole whole movement uh, up to so, yes so the this uh, the present uh, strike this the strike that started this year it started on 31st of january but this uh, strike 2022 strike also had a history because since last year because because of the covid pandemic and the uh, way in which the pandemic and the lockdown wrecked the lives of working class in general and anganwadi women workers and helpers in particular it actually uh, laid the ground for you know the objective conditions for a struggle to be initiated 
so uh, last year on 7th of september in 2021 there was a major rally on 7th of september in which uh, thousands of anganwadi women workers around 15000 18000 women workers they marched under the leadership of delhi state anganwadi workers and helpers union to delhi secretariat and we met with the minister the women and child development minister of delhi government and he assured that your demands will be met and you know we we'll look into it but nothing happened and with covid uh, pandemic unfolding the third wave coming in with the lockdown tremendous pressure was mounted on anganwadi women workers so they were made part of the covid vaccination drive also and they weren't paid regular honorarium also so then this this background played a role in uh, giving impetus to the current strike so uh, on 27th january this year we gave the notice for strike uh, to the concerned department and on 31st january the strike started and uh, it was a huge strike uh, bigger than what we had seen in 2015 and 17 mm -hmm. and uh, uh, we had three major rallies on 11th of february then on 22nd february and then on international working women's day on 8th march uh, which was argue, arguably uh the biggest uh march on women's day anywhere in the world like 18000 women workers participated there was sea of red on the streets and uh the militancy and the revolutionary spirit that the strike was unleashing was creating a lot of trouble for the political establishment for the central government for the delhi government and uh, on 9th of march this year they imposed uh, esma which is essential services maintenance act uh, saying that anganwadi services are termed as essential services and a strike has been prohibited for 6 months starting 9th of march and uh, we believe that it it was one of the biggest political victories of our strike because the, the state was in no position to combat the you know uh, uh, the the revolutionary spirit of the strike mm -hmm. the militancy of the strike and they had no other option but to uh, resort to imposing esma which is a very uh, you know draconian black law and has been used couple of times like uh, in past also on many militant struggles because when state does not see any other way of uh, putting an end to struggles then it resorts to and on 9th of march uh, temporarily we suspended the strike and uh, uh, the executive of the uh, of our union it it decided to also approach court and the judiciary uh, with the belief that the judiciary of this country a uh, claims to be you know non partisan claims to be very pro people then we thought uh, what better way of judging its credentials and then we moved high court we filed a writ petition and the, that matter is still going on uh, but after the uh, after this imposition of esma the state government and the department it terminated the services of 884 anganwadi women workers mm -hmm. and uh, again uh, a writ uh, petition has been filed in high court and that case is going on and we've achieved many victories in that court case also because the government was planning to terminate the services of 11492 women workers and there uh, uh, mind you there are 22000 anganwadi women workers and helpers in delhi and half of them were about to be terminated but once this writ petition was filed there was a stay on further termination and there was a again a stay on uh, new recruitment and uh, so these were uh, victories uh, to our struggle and also because apart from the court case right now also the agitation is going on in different forms for example we are running this campaign called naak mein dam karo uh, it it I, this is hindustani this is like little bit hindi urdu but yeah in english it would roughly translate as 
make their lives hell so whose lives we are making hell is basically the aam aadmi party government in delhi and the bhartiya janata party the fascist bjp government in the center because both of them uh, were in cahoots uh, in imposing this esma so because delhi is a half state so delhi government has also limited powers and then there is lg which is the representative of the uh, central government yeah that's so what i'm the, going to ask that uh, i think um, what we see here is a, is a wave of attacks by the state uh, using their all muscles uh, first of all using their bureaucracy by imposing esma and uh, administrative powers uh, limiting what you can do uh, that's very strange because essential services they are not treating them as proper services worker uh, they are without contracts for proper contracts and now they are imposing uh, the uh, esma law which is uh, which is draconian I, I i agree with you and i think then we can see the victimization of uh, 884 Uh, by laying off 884 workers, and um, as you rightly said, I think do, do you have any um, hope that uh, the judiciary will do something, or they are still dragging the whole case? Uh, as far as I can hear from you, uh, the termination uh, case is uh, going on really well. Uh, I believe one of the reasons is that because there is a struggle going on the ground as well. Mm-hmm. so uh, once you limit all your struggle to like legal means then obviously it has got limitations but uh, we are not the union which is going to limit our struggle to only legal framework and we've made it clear right from day one that the struggle that is taking place on the ground on the streets and this campaign that i'm speaking of it's being uh, run every single day so like every single day there are hundreds of women on streets of delhi and we uh, uh, you know uh, pin point one of the legislate uh, you know the M- mla or a mp or a councilor of both these parties and we uh, gherao them we target their offices and then we have our like demonstration in front of their offices in front of their houses so mm-hmm. this has actually helped in the legal case also because i believe that no judiciary functions in vacuum they also know that there is an ongoing struggle and this tremendous tremendous pressure is being faced by the judicial system as well that they uh, they can't run away because yeah so uh, and the, can you and I, also I, the, yeah. yeah yeah go ahead go ahead come yeah so uh, if you can also connect that what are the like the political party the roles of political parties in delhi and the center how they are looking this struggle and are you getting any support from from those parties who are uh, ruling uh, delhi or the center or any no. other opposition parties also even can you bit uh, tell about that uh both uh, the delhi government which is uh, headed by aam aadmi party and the central government headed by bhartiya janata party they've been uh, playing very antagonistic role uh, right from the beginning of our struggle uh, when our struggle when the strike started uh, bjp the fascist party uh, tried to maintain some sort of neutrality because they thought that okay fine the struggle is only against the state government but once they got to see the red wave on the roads of delhi they also knew that that this strike has got greater potential and then they also showed their true colors and uh, we must not forget that the lieutenant governor in delhi is the representative of central government and bjp has always uh, you know maneuvered uh, lg around whatever it wants to get done so lg on the behalf of central government and the state government they both imposed esma on the strike so they both were petrified by the rising uh, wave of the strike so uh, both these parties and uh, aam aadmi party because there has been a lot of illusion among the liberal sections of society regarding the politics of aam aadmi party but they are basically right wing populist bourgeois party and right since the since their inception they have resorted to all kinds of things that a bourgeois party does and as far as uh, you know their ideology is also con- uh, concerned they always have played 
the soft hindutva card so be it cnrc uh, movement in anti cnrc movement in india be it the jahangir puri uh, ri- uh, you know the attacks on the on on the uh, houses of uh, muslim and especially muslim workers in delhi right now and all other you know issues for example ram temple article 370 aam aadmi party has always towed the line of fascist bjp and there should be no uh, illusion regarding their real character and mixed with uh, this uh, right wing populism they've got this ngo kind of reformism because both uh, arvind kejriwal and manish sisodia the you know key leaders of aam aadmi party they have a background in ngo politics so this toxic blend of ngo reformism and right wing populism is what aam aadmi party is totally about and the small capitalist class in delhi the traders the property dealers and all this sort of uh, you know class uh, they have found this new representative in form of aam aadmi party and, and this, how how do you see the uh, other opposition parties uh, are they also supporting your movement uh, now the congress it did pay lip service and it did extend our support but uh, our union had made it clear right from the day of our coming into existence that our stage won't be open to any electoral political party so we we even if they are extending support it's it's their democratic right nobody can stop them but we also uh, exposed uh, these so called claims of you know extending their support to delhi anganwadi struggle whereas congress uh, is in power in rajasthan it's pa- it's in power in chatisgarh other states of india where the anganwadi women workers have the same plight they are facing the same plight as is of the uh, delhi anganwadi workers and also we must not forget that the scheme was actually launched by congress under the prime ministership of indira gandhi in 1975 so it's congress uh, that initiated the scheme so also i want to point out that the high court case that is going on uh, in delhi high court right now from the delhi government uh, one of the uh, key members of congress he is fighting on the behalf of delhi government abhishek manu singhvi so mm. delhi government is being represented by a congress leader in delhi high court against anganwadi women workers so i believe all these bourgeois electoral parties have been thoroughly uh, exposed as well as all kinds of revisionist so called left and, uh, party how do you see the uh, role of uh... other uh, like uh, soft left or uh, other parties liberal parties like uh, cpm or other parties uh, are they also supporting yeah. you yeah you term them uh, you know quite rightly they are liberal social democrats and their politics uh, uh, is thoroughly anti working class and now they uh, long back they have you know forsaken the path of revolution they don't have anything to do whatsoever with the revolutionary politics of uh, working class and as far as their role in the working class movement is also con- concerned it's very detrimental because they have actually acted as renegades of the working class struggle and not only in the anganwadi women workers struggle where they have played a uh, thoroughly uh, you know uh, anti worker and a treacherous role but also in other worker struggle in across india uh, and in anganwadi women worker struggle in in delhi also they actually were trying to sabotage the strike and right now also they are trying to uh, act as strike breakers and during the 2020 2022 strike and also prior to 2022 strike uh, in 20, 2015 also they were thrown out of the anganwadi women workers by the workers themselves because of the kind of role uh, they had been playing and uh, our union delhi state anganwadi workers and helpers union have uh, ha- has always appealed to all the workers in general and to the anganwadi workers and helpers across india to build independent revolutionary uh, trade unions mm-hmm. and to cut their ties because we uh, must not forget that these are like big federations 
and uh, because they've been active in working class movement for a long time now uh, workers also you know because of the lack of any revolutionary alternative try to tail end them but now with our strike we we've, we've received so many calls and so many messages from anganwadi women workers across india that you know for example in madhya pradesh and maharashtra and karnataka that we also want to build our independent trade unions please try and help us and and we are also trying to build this uh, channel of organizing these myriad struggles and try to rope them together and let's see uh, you yeah, know that's what i want goes. to say my my next question would be that uh what are you doing for creating this uh, solidarity with other uh, trade unions with other working class movements across the country so for example as far as you know independent uh, trade union movements led by any uh, you know working class organization or a, a trade union our union has been uh, supporting them whole soul and we have extended support to other workers movements in delhi and other parts of uh, country also as far as this particular sector of anganwadi is concerned uh, as i pointed out earlier also we are trying to uh, build a network a forge a network of independent trade unions and uh, uh, we've started to travel to other states of india also so that these independent trade unions can come into being uh because we must not forget that this is a central this is primarily a central government scheme and whatever demands we are raising are being raised by other anganwadi workers and helpers in other parts of india as well so a concerted and united effort on an all india level is what is needed right now and uh, uh, uh i i must say that the delhi struggle has actually acted as a you know ray of hope for many struggles because the kind of times we are living in uh, with the fascist modi government in power and the uh, destruction of the working class movement uh, consciously by these fascists in power uh, this is for all to see and this struggle taking place right in the middle of times that we are living in it actually uh, uh, played a crucial role in giving this hope that you know united yeah. movements are possible and it's only the working class that can actually pose a serious uh, challenge to the fascists in power and to all other bourgeois parties right. so i believe that uh, uh, i think one of the lessons that we've learned from our struggle is uh, to make this more widespread to uh, you know get in touch with other like minded organizations independent trade unions and then build a, a militant uh, working class movement a new a fresh so what are your now demands and what are the future uh, line of course of action um, regarding your movement so where you think this whole movement will be going uh, so uh, tomorrow is the labor day the may day so uh, tomorrow we are organizing a rally uh, it's the immediate task that we are uh, 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 organizing this rally from mandi house to jantar mantar tomorrow and as far as our struggle is concerned it will uh, continue and uh, also uh, although we have we are challenging the order of esma in the court but uh, even if we get an adverse judgment from the court Uh, we have decided then we'll break the law and once again the strike will commence in the in the coming months and uh, meanwhile uh, the struggle is continuing strike is just one of the forms of struggle but otherwise our struggle our agitation continues uh, as before and one of the key demands that uh, confronts our struggle and to all the struggles led by anganwadi women workers elsewhere is reg- is recognition of their work uh, as uh, you know as as uh, regular work uh, their regularization uh, uh, getting benefits such as esi pf uh, maternity leave 
these are long term demands and the short term demands would be increment of honorarium and uh, making it uh, uh, you know uh, to uh, to the extent of getting a living wage so these are our immediate and long term demands and our struggle still continues and it will continue that's really great thank you thank you shivani thank you today for for the for joining us and uh, sharing your thoughts uh, as you know it, there is a, this today is may day may day event and uh, there is may day going on and do you have any message for for the workers of the world uh, whoever they are listening to your message any any message to your to all all of the workers around the world uh, first of all i would like to extend uh, our deep felt solidarity to all the struggling workers across the globe and delhi state anganwadi workers and helpers union has has itself received tremendous support and solidarity from all uh, you know across uh, the world from example from the uk us australia uh, nepal uh, pakistan we have received so much love so much cooperation so much solidarity from other uh, workers and uh, it's our bounden duty to extend our solidarity to all the struggles that are going on and what better uh, occasion than may day to extend our uh, solidarity and uh, i i believe that workers of the world have nothing to lose but their chains and this is the time that we uh, reiterate our resolve to end uh, the drudgery the penury the 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 kind of exploitation that capitalism is unleashing on the workers across the globe and 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 uh, working class movement throughout the globe is the only way out uh, against the system as a whole the system driven by profit motive and also against the right wing upsurge the fascist upsurge that we are witnessing in so many parts of the globe and especially in india mm -hmm. so uh, what better day than may day to reaffirm our resolve so my heartfelt uh, solidarity to all the comrades and all the workers across the world thank and you thank you so much comrade for inviting me and letting me share my views thank you so much thank you shivani thank you very much yeah.